I've been following her for days now, and I don't think she's noticed me once since I spotted her at the gas station. I've stood directly behind her in line at the grocery store, inhaling her perfume. She bought her milk and frozen fruit. When she's at work, I sneak into her apartment and take little things that I'm sure she'll hardly even notice are gone. Mementos to remind me of her when this is done. Her name is Sarah, and she will be number nine. There's nothing really special about her. Long brown hair with bright green eyes that she hides behind her glasses. She's slightly chubby, but in a sexy way that makes me salivate at the thought of peeling the flesh from her bones. I picked her out because she ignored me. She passed right by me and acted as if I didn't exist. But just like the rest, I'll show her just how real I am. When she left for work this morning, I snuck into her apartment and drugged her favourite after-work indulgence. A bottle of Russian vodka she keeps in the freezer. Every night she comes in and pours a cup after hitting the shower. Then she sits on a couch and watches random horror movies before calling it a night. But not tonight. Tonight she won't make it off the couch. I waited in the darkness, watching Sarah go through her normal routine. When she finally drifts off, it's time. I casually stroll to the walking gate and enter the code. 4147. My heart is pounding with excitement. My mouth is watering. I can almost smell her blood and taste her tears. Tonight she will learn what it means to be forgotten. I calmly walk up to her front door, and using the spare key I stole a week ago, I slip right in. All I have on me is a roll of duct tape, but that's all I need. I bind her wrists and ankles, then tape her mouth shut just in case she wakes up a little early. After that I drag her through the apartment to her bedroom where I open the window and throw her unconscious body out. It's a one-story fall into some bushes that happen to be directly behind my car. Once I'm sure no one spotted me, I calmly walk out the front door and make my way around to the parking lot. After loading her into the trunk, I took off, overwhelmed by excitement as I was driving way too fast. I was a few miles from our final destination when some kid stumbled out into the road ahead of me. I smashed into him and lost control. I overcorrected and the car flipped, sending us tumbling into the drainage ditch that runs alongside the highway. And then... Everything went black. I woke up staring at a ceiling fan slowly spinning overhead. The smell of rotted flesh and smoke burned my lungs. Before I could get myself together, a voice boomed through my brain. Hello, Edward. I winced in pain and sat up looking around the room, only to see that there was no one there. Where are you? I blurted out looking for anywhere someone could be hiding. Everywhere, it growled. I smell darkness in your soul. Let me in. The words bounced off the walls and echoed in my brain as I rolled off the blood-stained mattress and got to my feet. A wave of pain slammed into me and I dropped to the floor. It was laughing at me. <laughs> what do you want? I growled, fighting the pain. Everything. It whispered into my ear. I could feel hot breath on the side of my face, but when I turned to look it in the eyes, there was no one there. I crawled across the mildewed carpet, inching towards the door, as it kept whispering to me. You're weak, but I will make you strong. Let me in. Pain surged through me and my vision blurred, but I had to get out of there. I reached and grabbed a knob, pulling the door open. Instantly the pain stopped, and the voice was silenced. I couldn't believe my eyes. The ground was literally covered with sun-bleached bones, as far as I could see. The smell of rotten meat made my eyes water, but I was getting out of that room. I crawled until I felt the bones digging into my arms, and got back on my feet. What the fuck is this? I turned to look at the building I'd come out of, and it seemed familiar. The place looked exactly like the old sundown of motel off Route 95, but before I could grasp what I was looking at, that voice flooded my mind. Feast on the flesh of the lamb. Let me in. My lungs filled with a new smell, the overpowering scent of gasoline. 
The blaring sound of a car horn filled the air and my body got weak. A trickle of blood ran down my forehead as my eyes rolled back in their sockets, and I fell backwards, instantly waking up slumped over the steering wheel of my car. Thumping from the trunk shook me out of my daze. I must have been knocked out longer than I realised, but considering the condition of the car, it's a wonder I woke up at all. I wiped the blood off my face and looked around. No headlights in the distance. Looked like luck was on my side. I opened the door and stepped out onto the highway, stretching, looking up at the calm night sky, a little sore but no worse for wear. I strolled around to the trunk and opened it, only to be ambushed by Sarah. She kicked me in the chest, knocking me back, as she jolted from the trunk and took off running. I love it when they run. I watched her for a second, and a smile slowly crept its way onto my face before I started out after her. Please, help me, she screamed into the cold night air, hoping someone, somewhere, would hear her pleas. But no one did. I closed the distance quickly and tripped her. She face-planted into the gravel, undoubtedly knocking out a few teeth, but she wasn't done fighting. She got up off the ground and threw a wild right that clipped my jaw. I have to admit, she put up more of a fight than I thought she would. Sarah followed up her right hook with a predictable kick to my balls. Luckily for me, I always wear a cup when I go hunting. I pretended to go down in pain, and she made the mistake of getting a little too close, thinking she had the upper hand. She tried to kick me, and I grabbed her leg, throwing her off balance. She tumbled to the ground, letting out a surprised yelp. But it was too late. I was on her. The look of surprise in her eyes when she realized I'd been toying with her made me laugh as I wrapped my hands around her throat and squeezed till she blacked out. I dragged her off the road into the brush. Since I didn't have any of my toys, I'd have to make do with whatever I had on hand. I searched around for a few seconds and found a nice, heavy rock, then waited for her to wake up. The second Sarah opened her eyes, I smiled at her, and then brought the rock down on her skull. It was a wonderful wet crunch that made my heart flutter as her warm blood splattered my face. I brought the rock down a few more times, turning her pretty little face into a meaty paste. But before I could enjoy my work, that horrible voice invaded my brain. Let me in. My vision blurred and pain flooded my body. All I could hear was laughter. The rotten odor of that dark place took my breath away. The world around me warped and spiralled out of control, spinning faster and faster, becoming a blur of shifting shadows and moonlight. The voice exploded in my brain. Let me in. I gave in. The meat was sweet and bloody. I ate my fill under the pale moonlight, and the pain stopped. When I was done, I hung the remains from a tree and staggered off into the cold, dark night. I normally don't hunt very often, maybe once or twice a year, and Sarah was my second of the year. My plan was to move on after her, but something's different now. There's a hunger that won't go away. It's been six days, and no matter what I eat, I'm still hungry. I'm trying to fight it, but I'm starving. I need to eat. I have to eat. I walked to the grocery store near my house and picked up a couple of steaks along with a nice-sized roast. I was on my way home when some guy bumped into me and made me drop my bag. <sighs> the arsehole didn't even bother to say excuse me. He just ignored me and kept walking as if nothing had happened. I watched him walk to his truck and drive away. Everything in me wanted to follow him home and slaughter his entire family, but with no car it was impossible. My stomach growled and my head throbbed. I picked my bag up off the sidewalk and started my walk home, when something caught my eye. It was a bright purple flyer. One of the local church groups passed those flyers around to the homeless. It's for Sunday service and a free lunch. My vision went blurry for a second, and the voice whispered in my ear, Feast on the flesh of the lambs. When my vision cleared, I was walking up to a church. I could feel my body moving, but I wasn't in control of my actions. I walked inside and stood there, looking around for a few seconds before the preacher walked over and extended a hand. 
Good evening, brother. I'm Father Gilroy. Is there anything I can do to help you? I reached out and grabbed his hand. Yes, you can. I said the words, but the voice wasn't mine. It was deep and inhuman sounding. A look of confusion and fear flashed across the preacher's face as my grip tightened and the bones in his hand started to shift and crack. The preacher tried to scream, but I reared my head back and brought it crashing down on the center of his face. There was a wet snap and a crunch of bone as he staggered back, but I was still holding his hand. His body swayed to my left as he tumbled into the chairs that were set up there. He landed flat on his back. I put my foot in his armpit and pulled until I felt the muscles tearing and the bones being ripped from their sockets. I pulled harder and the flesh gave way to a river of blood. By then the preacher was nearly dead. I watched myself tear into his body and eat until the hunger was gone. After that I hung what was left of him on the cross and left. The priest's death was all over the news. They were blaming it on an escaped murderer named Terence Collins, who was recently sentenced to three consecutive life sentences. When I saw his face, I had to laugh. It was a kid I'd hit with my car. The hunger stayed away for two weeks after that. But with no transportation, I couldn't leave town. Eventually, the police found the bodies of Sarah French and Terence Collins, along with a wrecked car. My blood and fingerprints were all over the vehicle, but it didn't matter. I wasn't born in a hospital, I've never been arrested, and there's no record of me anywhere. According to the world, I don't exist. I'm just another face in the crowd. I'm that guy you walk right by and never give a second look to, but here's the catch. I'm not the only one. Most don't do what I do, but we all do what we have to. In any case, the police were everywhere, and my stomach was beginning to growl. I walked the streets for hours waiting for a lamb to cross my path, but the voice wouldn't speak. I stopped and took a rest on the bus stop for a few minutes. When I saw him, the asshole had knocked my bags out of my hand. I watched him pull into a small set of apartments across the street from where I was sitting. The voice didn't come back, but this was personal. The voice would have to wait. He's a big guy, 6'3 maybe. In decent shape, so I'm pretty sure he's going to be a fighter. Once I knew what apartment was his, I pulled out my phone and saved the location on Google Maps, then started the walk home. I was about halfway there when I decided to stop and grab a bite to eat. There's a diner on Fifth Street that makes the best roast beef sandwiches on earth, and I couldn't pass it up. I walked in, made my order, and took a booth in the corner while I waited for my food. That's when it happened. My vision blurred and the voice whispered in my ear. V. The next thing I know I'm walking to the door and locking it. They were close to closing when I walked in, so there were no other customers. Just me, the waitress and the cook. Excuse me, sir. You can't lock our doors. Will you please unlock them and leave the building? The waitress demanded. I stood there with my back to her the agitated voice drifting into white noise while the laughter in my brain made my body vibrate with energy. The laughter stopped when I heard the waitress's shoe click on the tile floor behind me. I spun around and grabbed her by the neck and then punched her in the stomach so hard her knees buckled and she threw up. The sound of someone rushing towards me let me know the cook was coming. I looked up in time to see a baseball bat collide with my head, but I didn't feel anything. As he went to take another swing, I grabbed his left forearm, and his bone snapped on contact, splintering outwards, ripping through his skin. His jaw dropped open in an attempt to scream, and in an instant my free hand shot forward, cramming my middle two fingers over his lower teeth and under his tongue. My thumb sunk through his soft palate, and when my fingertips met, I yanked back. There was an audible wet pop as his jaw came unhinged and the flesh tore away. The cook made a gurgling sound and heaved as his tongue stretched beyond its limit. Everything happened so fast I could hardly believe what I was seeing. A gasping sound pulled my attention back to the waitress who was rolling around on the floor trying to catch her breath. I stepped over and kicked her in the stomach, flipping her onto her back. I mounted her, pinning both arms under my knees and clamped my hand over her mouth. As my body leaned in, 
I caught my reflection in her eyes. What I saw wasn't me. The eyes were sunken and yellow. The skin was reddish brown. I only caught a glimpse of it, but the second I saw it, my vision distorted and blurred. By the time I was able to see again, I was at home in bed. The next morning the murders were on the news. Making matters worse, there was a video from inside the diner. The whole thing was caught on security cam. I was exposed. The police had my full description and the manhunt was on. I packed my bag and waited for sundown. I'm not leaving Tap without finishing what I started. Besides, I need a ride and I like his truck. I didn't have time to plan it all out, so this would have to be quick and clean. No blood. I filled a small spray bottle with liquid cyanide and made the walk across town. The truck was parked in its usual spot, so I strolled by and dropped my bag in the back, then went to the front door and knocked. Who is it? A voice called out from inside. I smiled to myself at the thought of killing this inconsiderate prick. It's Eddie. I'll stay a few doors down. Yeah, there's somebody out here messing with your truck. I could hear him storming towards the door. The second it flew open, I sprayed him in the face and he stumbled back, gasping, tripping over a bar stool. I stepped in quickly and closed the door. His keys were on the bar along with his wallet and phone. I grabbed all three, then turned to walk out as he started getting up off the floor. What the fuck are you doing? He barked as he tried to charge me before clutching his chest and falling face down on the carpet. I stood there for a few seconds watching him die. As satisfying as it was, there was no time to waste. I calmly walked out and locked the door, then got in the truck and drove away. It's been a few days without the hunger. I'm not even sure where I am anymore. Some shitty motel in the middle of nowhere. It won't be long. Sooner or later this thing inside me will need to feed, and I can't risk it exposing me again, so I'm going up into the mountains to try and starve it out. I just hope it works. Well, in any case, I'll be back soon. Until then, be kind to one another out there. You never know who you might bump into. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, Looking forward to seeing you all again real soon, so come check me out, okay? <laughs>